For many years now, it has been the case that it is not that hard or there are a broad array of choices of things that do almost everything that anybody wants in game design. I mean, modern game engines from many people and what you can do on the, ho on the console hardware is really spectacular. You know, you do not have the early day limitations of you have to build something this very peculiar way because that's all we can handle. You can do almost anything you imagine. I mean, there are still areas where you say, oh, I imagine this particular huge vista with all of this particular foliage and water and clouds and all this stuff where you still have to make approximations and adjustments to your vision to get it in there. You don't differentiate yourself strictly on an engine. Now, we have some unique technology in Intech 5 with the mega texture and the surfaces, and there are things that you see in Rage that you won't see across any other game. But still, any given scene that you see uh, that might have this wonderful mega texture detail there, lots of other engines could render that scene. They would just have to use up their entire texture budget to do that. So we are past the point where anybody can make a screenshot that you really can't do on some other technology. So a lot more of it comes down to how easy is it to use this? How easy can artists do things that they couldn't do before? Uh, how easy can they bring to bear their creative ability? Uh, what does this allow the game designers to do? What barriers does it still put in people's way? So the differentiation isn't so much on raw capabilities, but it's on how you get to choose and balance between it and how easy it is to creatively exploit it. I think the wonderful thing about the games industry here is that it is a vibrant, competitive market, and there are lots of really smart people working really hard in different directions, and I think that's good and healthy. The fact that we have a bunch of different engines and technologies working is is good, and I don't think that if there was a gaming czar or something <laughs> that could come in and say, this is the technical direction for the industry, that would be an inferior solution. We've got a great market solution right now where people are going out, picking their ideas, laying their bets down, and committing lots of resources behind it, and the market gets to make up its mind about which one of these were the right bets on there. And anything that we as software developers do is going to be kind of based around uh, which players win well in the coming next generation console shift, which ones have major play in the PC area. And there's lots of stuff going on there, and I am looking at things with a decade-long time scale. You know, I, I expect to be doing something relevant to this a decade from now, so I hope that we do still wind up with uh, kind of a good evolving market there. You know, my particular technology stuff, I can probably adapt to what I think any of the the potential upcoming uh, systems are, but I won't really know until their hardware exists and I can go apply the research to it. But as with anything here, we've got plans, backup plans, and fallback plans. Uh, if things don't work out well with those particular technologies, we'll continue to, to evolve the technologies that are working well now. Because no matter what in this next generation, they have to do what we do now at least four times better. The hope is they'll enable brand new things that nobody's ever been able to do before, but it's going to do at least what we do now much better. I do believe that the I.O. devices, or the input side of things, will actually have a larger impact on differentiating gaming in the coming generation than what we produce on the output side. Because what we can do audiovisually is really good enough for about any kind of game that anybody wants to do. We can always suck up more resources and we'll make better looking stuff, but it's clear that you're on kind of a diminishing returns part of the curve there. And there are clearly still things that are frustrating to interact and tell a game what you want it to do. So there are better IO devices yet to be had. And the fact that the Wii and the DS have had huge success with unconventional input devices uh, I think is telling that people are interested in seeing different things there. But I don't think that we've got a foregone conclusion on what really is going to work out. And the intermediate steps, like some of the better motion sensing things and things that might be done with like, haptic feedback and different things, are all interesting technologies that I very much hope lots of things, experiments go on. And that's why we do need to make sure that multiple players stay viable here, because if it was just Microsoft and Sony, if and Nintendo hadn't made it into this generation, we would be poorer for the experience of the Wii there. The trouble with all of this is, is that with games costing so much to develop, no matter how cool your device is, if you're just emulating something that could be done on a gamepad anyways, your new input device isn't going to be all that important. It's only when you wind up getting a game developed to take advantage of it there, 
and if it's a niche platform, that's going to be a hard sell. That was the great thing about the Wii going out. It's a big market on there, and they've been able to do games that just don't exist on other platforms because it's a it's a it's a good enough market to allow people to develop for it. And that's the tough thing with any controller strategy. So the tough thing about the PC market is that the market's smaller than the console market, but the standards are still very high. I although that's not true across the board. There are a large amount of successful games in the kind of casual game, web game market that people don't look at as PC gaming when they're thinking high-end titles on there and a lot of titles that are migrating to the consoles. But that actually is where a lot of new developers and some innovation and things that are going on there because it would be a hard sell for us to, uh, for like id Software, we're experimenting with Quake Live, which is our PC only, totally focused on that side of things but it is nine-year-old technology on there. It's actually been spruced up to look better than I expected it to with all of this, but I, it would be hard sell to go out and put that in packaged goods and sell it on store shelves because people are like, well, everything should look like Rage does. Rage is coming out on the PC, but if you want to do that, you're playing in a different order of magnitude of millions of dollars that winds up being put on that. I, the upside on the PC about being able to have cool new hardware, I is interesting on there and you get to see new things like the the Sixth Sense stuff that uh, we've been looking at is right now a PC peripheral and it's totally cool uh, and we're going to look and see what we can do on that but I can't imagine us saying okay we're going to do a from scratch game built around this really wonderful control interface here and unfortunately that's what it needs you know, it needs a project like that but you know I think that needs to come from companies that are like it's software. I think there's opportunities for smaller studios to go and do that from scratch thing where they might be betting the company on it, but they might win big also. <laughs>